Hi, lovely. Before I introduce you to this week's very inspiring podcast guest, I would like to remind you that enrollments are currently open to an exclusive live round of Brand Alchemy, my signature brand foundation program. Imagine having unshakable clarity and confidence to capture the attention of your dream customers with ease and fun. Let me guide you to create your very own personality-packed brand blueprint. We kick off on Monday, the 21st of March at 10 a.m. Adelaide time for six weeks. Click the link below in the show notes to learn more and sign up to secure your place to become the master of your own brand. Welcome to Brand Lover, honest, real and lively conversations for flourishing entrepreneurs and budding business owners on a mission to cultivate a heartfelt brand that connects with their purpose-driven mission. My hope is that you walk away feeling inspired and refreshed with a weekly takeaway in your back pocket that you can apply to your life or business. Welcome Anna Van Dyke from Lunchbox Mini to Brand Lover. Thank you so much for being here with me today, Anna. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. I'm very excited as well because I love your story and I have loved being part of it and witnessing it. Um, So first of all, Tell us a little bit about yourself, just who you are and what you do on a day-to-day. Okay, so yes, um, I am a mum of two. So my kids are 10 and 8. Up until about September last year, I was running my business from home. So I loved that that could be flexible around my family and my kids. Uh, We have had a massive shift in moving out of home. So that's been a whole new uh, world for me as a mum to navigate and my family as well. Um, We've just moved into a warehouse. So that's kind of changed things. Um, But other than that, um, yeah, I try and do as much work around kids' school hours, which is the point of this business. Um, And yeah, married, live at home. We have a dog called Coco. I think that's pretty much it. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds sounds idyllic. Um, So tell us about Lunchbox Mini. What do you do? Who do you serve? How do you do it? So Lunchbox Mini, I um, sell the most amazing on-trend, amazing quality products to help busy mums make lunches more easier, better, more organised. So basically scrapping all those heaps of containers that you use that you're constantly washing and drying and packing and the kids have to open and feel really overwhelmed by and just making making sure everything's all in one, it's leak-proof, it's airtight, it's good quality and it's just going to make your job of packing lunches so much easier. Easier. Amazing. Your whole face just lit up when you. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, tell me how it all started. Sure. So, I had been a stay at home mum for about seven years. Um, my husband worked six days a week and really long hours, and it just kind of, I wanted to be around for my kids um, from the beginning. So, we did that. My youngest was set to start prep, and I, over the last kind of 12 months leading into that, I just found that I'd really lost a piece of me. I felt like I needed a challenge. I felt like you know, in her naps, I'd be sitting watching an episode of Real Housewives or something, or I just, I just felt like I lost a, a sense of me. And um, so I was looking for probably three or four months just for things that I could still, that I really wanted to still be there for the school drop-offs and pickups, and not want to have to do a nine till five where, um, you know, the kids had been up to school care and all that because the job I was doing pre-kids was very nine till five. It was a 45-minute commute and that wasn't something I wanted to do. So I was looking for um, either a job which had hours that I could do within school hours, which are few and far between, um, but also maybe a franchise or my own business and just really had no idea. So it was a lot of Googling. And then one night I just happened to be on Gumtree and found that there was a business for sale at the Sunshine Coast. So I'm in Brisbane and it was a lunchbox business and it was all online and um, they were doing it as kind of a bit of a side hustle for them working on their own family business and they just couldn't do both together. So they were selling it. Um, and I just thought, well, look, that's something I can do from home. And I loved cooking and I loved creating. That was definitely a hobby of mine. So I kind of thought, well, why not? So it came with a website. They had, I think, about 5,000 Instagram followers and about 15,000 Facebook followers. 
Uh, and yeah, so I went up there and um, Sunshine Coast had a bit of a handover. Uh, all the stock that they had at the time could fit in the boot of my car, which just blows wow. my mind now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, so I packed that up and bought it home and was like, wow. So now I've got this business, like a Facebook account. Like I didn't really even post much on my own personal Facebook before that point anyway. Yeah. I think I got the kids in the yard and like staged them with the yum box and like stuff. It was, I look at it now and think, oh God, that's awful. But I just put a post up saying, oh, look at this, like, look at my, look at this or whatever. And um, so, yeah, that was, really, I really had absolutely no idea what I was delving into. But at the time it ticked the boxes of a hobby. It gave, had, I could set myself goals and have, you know, ambition and drive and do it around the kids. And so that was what I was after at the time. That's amazing. I don't think I've ever had heard the story in that way before. That's just so exciting that you just went, yep, yeah, this is it, and jumped straight in there. Well, um, it, yeah, and to think that I'd, I think my thought was like, look, I'm packing lunches for a very long time to come. So if this, you know, if there's something that's going to relate, be relatable with yes. what I do, um, packing a lunch box is something that just is, is, is in my life for a long time. Yeah. That's really smart. And you're doing it anyway. So you yes. to make some money. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, okay. That's, oh, I'm just, I love that story so much. So, um, okay. Let's chat about branding now because it was, I think it was shortly after this point and correct me if I'm wrong, that you contacted me. Um, and usually small business owners in those early stages, they are, it's almost like too scary to invest in branding in those early stages. Like it's, it's a big investment for a small business, especially one at home, especially yeah. when you're a mom and, you know, any capital, you know, that's going into the business usually comes from the family income. Um, so what made you decide to invest so enthusiastically in your brand initially? Um, and yeah, was it one of the first things that you did? Like, I remember it being quite early. So just yeah, talk about that. I think it was about a year. Um, I definitely did. Kind of, it was a bit of a lead up to that point. So I remember when I took over the business, I said to the owner at the time, it was actually the husband who did the handover with me. And I was saying, I was like, do you know, do you think I should put out there that we've changed owners? Like this small business was also new to me and he yeah. said to me look people don't really like change and then this was just his opinion so people don't like change yeah. I think if you just if we just kind of keep it under the radar because you know we've got this kind of steady it was doing I think about 20 sales a month he's like if we just kind of keep this steady you know pattern and no you know doesn't look like anything's changed behind the scenes I think that's probably you know the way to go and so I took that on board so I didn't do much about putting myself out there um, just because I thought, right, well, I'll just keep with the customers because there was a, you know, a pretty good, um, yeah, turnover and uh, repeat customer. Uh, so I didn't put myself out there. But about a month or two into it, I began to realise that that's 100% the opposite of what I should do because especially with something like lunch boxes, it is a pretty saturated market and people like to support the mum behind the business. They want to know who the business is and who they're supporting. And so that was a kind of an error I think I made early on about, um, yeah, not putting myself out there. So I then at that point also wanted to kind of put my own spin on this business because it had been existing for a while before and there was so much that I wanted to do with it differently because they didn't have the time that I had because they were running this other their other family business so I wanted to do things differently and I their logo the logo had like fruit and vegetables in it if you remember um exactly. I remember yeah. it being a bit average it, it looked a bit 90 <laughs> bit 80s 90s and I just we'll wanted start to, somewhere though we'll start yeah somewhere. Oh, de oh definitely and it did the job but yeah I just wanted to move away from having any like the fruit and veg in the logo so because that's not a pack I'm not one to say you need to pack your five serves or have your five serves yeah. or whatever and I just that was yeah. like coming from a very non-judgmental space about lunch boxes because everyone's on their own lunch boxing journey and I'm not going to be slamming down you need to have carrot in your lunch box and all that because there were carrots and apples and strawberries in my logo so was that always that always graded on me and I just yeah. wanted something that was me that reflected because I think with every business as well you as a person 
um, have your own spin on a business and the branding and the look and feel, it does come down to you as I think behind the scenes. So I wanted to have my, like how my, yeah, branding language and, you know, all of that, have it representing how, yeah. look at how I felt. Yeah. You need to feel aligned with it so that yes. you can show up with it and it helps to increase that confidence. That's a much better way of saying that. Thank Actually, you. That's my job. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> uh, but no, it was about 12 months after and um, I had seen you done at work with um, some other small businesses and yeah. you just, uh, yeah, have a great flair and just a great way. I just wanted something simple but effective. And, yeah. You, and yeah, that's what we did and really yeah. happy with how that's um, come about. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but how did that? Sort of how well, what happened then? Like so you rebranded and you stepped into this brand that felt more aligned for you and more sort of um I guess in stepping into what you wanted to like into that message that you wanted to send so that you can attract the right type of people, the right audience into, you know, into this this culture that you're cultivating. Um, so how did that help? with your actual business growth from there and the confidence that you had then to show up in this way that you were wanting to? Yeah, I think it was definitely a step in part of the bigger picture of what I wanted for this business. I think what I found going into it, which I, again, uh, was completely new to me, but within having a lunchbox business, so people who want to spend anywhere between like $40 and $70 on a lunchbox, it can seem very overwhelming seeing like six different types and them going, well, you know, I've owned, before this, I used to pay $5 when it was half price at Woolies for my yeah. lunchbox. And so now if I'm going to spend $40 or $50 or $60, I want to make sure it's the right one. And you've got like five or six options, like how do I know? And so um, video was definitely, I found to be the most effective way of kind of getting the point or the message across, being able to show my products visually side by side and packing them and what you can fit inside. Um, so that was definitely, I think part of having a new brand was then having the confidence to be my, be myself and put myself out there. And that did, definitely didn't happen overnight. Like that took yeah. time to start with stories and start with videos and then move on to lives. And now it's, it's really like second nature. Um, but that is really the bread and butter of my business is me being out there, being able to show my products and show what a difference they can make. Um, and also, yeah, feeling proud of the, the business, of yeah. the whole overall picture of everything, of the yeah. products that I sell and the way that it looks and the way that it makes the customer feel. Um, yeah, so I think that's been a big part of it. I think since having... Um, Starting at also grown, I've got a Facebook group now. So it's got about 10,000 members in there who are just amazing mums who are packing lunch boxes like every day and supporting each other. Because I think when you pack a lunch box, like you'll send it to school with your kids and you'll often get the scrunched up nose or I'm not eating that or that's to say or whatever. Yeah. Like, you can take a photo and share it with mums and who will lift you up and be like, oh, that's a great idea, or it gives you new ideas for you to try, or even just say, like, you know, right now I'm hating my kids. They didn't touch a thing. They told me they wanted this on the weekend at the grocery store and now they haven't. Like, just being able to vent, celebrate, um, share. Like, I just love the community that's in there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think the biggest areas of growth of my business have definitely been me kind of coming into my own brand now and the video and the connection that I have with my customers and followers and Facebook group. Yeah. I love that connection piece and also just from your, what you're saying, it's a really good example of just taking one step on the staircase and not worrying about what's like at the top. Yeah. Just taking one step at a time, not yeah. looking down, not looking up and just having, well, you know, like taking that one step gives you the confidence to take that next step. And so that kind of leads me to my next question because coming from, having your entire uh, stockpile in the boot of your car <laughs> now having a warehouse that you open yeah. on weekends to actually sell like a shop. <laughs> so yeah. Like that's yeah. mind blowing. That's only yeah. in a couple of years. Yeah. Um, so walk me through that. 
Yeah, so okay. it used to, we had a spare bedroom at home and so things would just be on, we'd have boxes on top of the bed, under the bed in the cupboards. That's how it started. I was actually looking at some photos the other day that I thought I'd lost it all. But, wow. but no, I can see photos of like where it was all started. To think that I was packing orders from that, just I think if a customer saw that, they would, they would cringe <laughs> and probably never come back. But Mind blowing. Yeah. Um, so that's where it started. Um, we then mo- ended up after about 12 months, we moved everything out of the spare room. The bed um, was gone and we put up shelving um, and put all our stock up there. We then had a landing area, which we had a couch. The couch then had to go and we had just that piled up with boxes and it was the back to school season, not the one just gone, but the one before. And it was just crazy. Um, I had two girls helping me who lived down the road. So they were like grade 10, I think. They'd come every day in January to help pack orders and they would just have to rummage their way amongst the boxes and stuff. Um, but I would be I just the hardest thing was having all this stock land on your doorstep and needing to take it upstairs and unpack it and just it was at the entry to our bedroom so every weekend Mm -hmm. on a Saturday morning I'd actually spend because I found that to be really like between 6 a.m and 9 a.m kids would be watching tv and I would just spend time unpacking stock sorting stuff out trying to move things around to make things fit better um and I'd get home from school pick up in the afternoon there'd be a delivery there of like 12 boxes I'd take it all upstairs it was just a constant reminder you couldn't escape it, basically. Yeah, it was, kind of, it was the it was a good problem to have because it just go to show how quickly the business was growing, and you know, I definitely ticked so many boxes of me achieving so much and being proud of you know how this was all happening and what it was becoming, but it just took over my whole life, and um, yeah, it just got to a point. I did end up hiring someone at home, Jess, who's with me now as well, but she used to come in Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and pack orders from home which was great but still like it's your home and I'd often yeah like, having a shower or I'd get a something you know it's just it you know it's just different when it's your home so yeah, absolutely I think as of about February or March last year after the madness of back to school we were looking for a warehouse space um and just with everything else that was going on with COVID it was a really hard time because I think there were other small e-com businesses online that were suddenly growing very fast and so finding a warehouse space was really hard within our area um and so it took about six months and yeah it was a long six months of still trying to juggle everything at home yeah but September we found one and um, yeah, so moved in. So I've now, so Jess, who was packing for me there, she now works here five days a week with me. I've got Amber who comes and packs three or four days a week and interviewing today for a marketing coordinator. So have it, just having this space now has just transformed my life really. Yeah. Um, deliveries come here and there is, got you know staff here to unpack it they come during business hours I drive out of here pick the kids up and I will still do work on stuff at home you know at night and sometimes in the afternoon but that's my choice and that's on the computer and it's not stock because I think that was probably my biggest issue was that my time my best asset is video and talking about the products and you know making reels and creating stuff and when I'm spending hours unpacking boxes that's just not you know yeah a great business model basically yeah 100 percent. and it's a really also just shows that you need to really recognize your season you know like when you started your business your kids were younger and it was perfect to have it all at home and then you get to this point where they're a bit older and all of a sudden it's taking over your whole life what started as something that you were doing for yourself like to give yourself a purpose is just all of a sudden it's gone the opposite and so it's yeah it's just really exciting and that you I guess are able to recognize that and and open the door for growth rather than doing the opposite and putting limitations on yourself to keep yourself in that season. Does that make yeah. sense? Oh, definitely. I think my husband had said, because obviously running out of home, you have pretty much zero expenses. Like there's no mm. internet, there's no rent, there's no electricity. You're paying all of that anyway. So my yeah. husband, it did take a bit of convincing for him because he was like, he had said, you know, as soon as you move out, 
that it's expensive. Like, you know, the overheads versus being at home, it is big. But I knew that if we moved out, I could have more support. So that meant I could do bigger things. So yeah. that was kind of the trade-off. So it did take him a bit to get on the same page. And, and look, the, the cost of running is definitely higher. But for my quality of life, um, my fam- I would happily make the same amount that I made at home being here in the warehouse because my yeah my life is just better better yeah. balanced yeah I love that so good yeah. um all right so let's move on to a little secret that I know that you, you've been keeping <laughs> you can <laughs> yes. choose not to say anything if you want to but I thought I'd just ask are we able to talk about that Yeah, you can talk about it. Yes, I actually haven't said any of this to any of my followers or, you know, groups. So, but it's coming. But no, I'm very happy to start. Okay. Yeah. So you are at a point now where you are diversifying because previous to now, you have been selling other people's products. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm lucky enough to know that you have developed your own product which is so exciting so tell us a little bit about that and about that journey I think because like all the products that I stock here of others like most of my products that I have here are from other mum businesses which I love so my biggest selling brands are like Monty Co and Little Lunchbox Co and Yumbox Box at, well, no, we unbox in Australian, but B box. But they're um, all mums who have decided that there was a gap in the market for a particular product and have gone out and done their own, um, come up with their own product. And the way when I video them and post about them, talk about them, like I do kind of talk about them like that they're on my own because I use them so much and I love them with my kids. And I definitely have been inspired, I think, um, through them and seeing what they've been able to create. So I thought I would just dip my toe in the water. So we'll see how it goes. I don't have anything too high expectations, but it's just a bit of fun. It's, um, yeah, I obviously the manufacturing process is just an absolute game and it's like a whole new world in itself basically and with COVID thrown in with materials and shipping and manufacturing delays like I've that's been you know it's been a great great time to be starting but um it's been about two years in the making and I haven't been sure this whole way through at what point I'd actually have the products here to be able to do anything with so it's kind of initially I started and thought oh this will be great it'll be here by x and then we'll you know have this massive plan but as we were doing samples back and forwards and then delays after delay. I just kind of thought when it's here, it's here. So yeah. it did arrive um, at the end of last year, I think about late November, early December, but it was just that is our peak time for everything here and I just didn't have the time or the resources to throw at the product and the launch that I want to do. And yeah. um, so we are photographing the products at the end of this month. So I'm hoping kind of in the next four to eight weeks we'll start um, putting it out there to the public. But it's it's not a lunchbox. Uh, it's it's something to help with lunchboxing. Um, and it's something that I've wished that I, or something that I've known that I've wanted to use when it comes to lunchboxing. So, uh, yeah, I won't say much more than that at this stage. But, uh, yes, I think I came to you probably even a year ago. Because, yeah, I think it was about a year ago. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't believe it's taken this long, through, like really. But, yes, you've done, we've um, made it the label or the brand called Crumbs Co. So it is kind of a division under Lunchbox Mini. So it will be stocked through my store and the brand, similar colours, but its own label, I guess, Um and have definitely loved the packaging that we've come up with um, for the three products that they'll be, yeah. Oh, that's very exciting and a little mysterious. Which yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, just to wrap up, because this has been amazing and I've yeah. loved chatting with you, what's your golden nugget piece of advice for a mum at home starting her product-based business? Yeah, I probably have it. So I have a couple. I would say definitely a day at a time and a step at a time. Um, I found, I still remember my goal was if I could just do like five sales a day, which just seemed like at the time was like, wow, could you imagine if I was doing five a day? Because I would get a sale and I would literally stop everything I was doing. I'd run upstairs, pack it 
get it ready like that was kind of my day and so it's amazing to think now like we do over like in excess of a thousand to fifteen hundred orders a month um out of here now so that Uh is just mind-blowing that that's you know in I've had the business now four years so it's taken a bit of time in but it's but also not really a bit of time like it's had to come fast yeah Um, considering you're still a mum like and you're still very present mum you're doing all that stuff as well you're a wife like it's it's amazing yeah Yeah. Yeah. so I'll definitely say one step at a time and the other thing that I think I used to spend a lot of time on like writing like my whole day would be like writing an Instagram post or like you know just spending time on stories even which are great but also knowing what your long-term goal is and working on the long-term end like where you want to be and not letting not getting distracted by you know sitting on Instagram and looking at one thing and then an hour later you're still there doing stuff I think it's it's taken me a while actually but last year I started having this diary where every morning when I was having breakfast I'd sit and write what are three things that are going to, if, I could, if today was going to be successful, what are three things that I would do today that would make, I could turn around and say today was a good day and write them out and whether it's have three things for family, business, personal. So whether it's read the kids a chapter of a book at night or go for a walk this morning or get this email done and just make it really achievable because I've, I'm a massive list writer and it, it gets so overwhelming when you have a list of 20 things and at the end of the day you've now got a list of 40 things and that was so my life and so I just kind of learned to break it down a bit and also like switch off my phone for an hour and don't let don't get distracted by notification because that's what sucks your time up basically you've got I think as when you've got these windows of school or naps or anything don't you need to kind of just even if you focus for half an hour or an hour yeah um, yeah you you need to use that time wisely Yes, that is such a good tip, especially in those early stages. It's really hard to know what to focus on. So to be really intentional about what you are focusing on, yeah. like, you know, recording an Instagram story and deleting it and recording it and deleting yes. it and recording it. And yes. then, you know, 45 minutes later and yes. all you've done is connect to a few people on stories. Well, that, and, and you, you do feel like you feel like you know, I used to, and you feel like you know, like, like that was a really good yeah. story, but then 24 hours later, it's gone. Like exactly. You know, you, that's not, yeah. That's and not even that many people might see it, like depending yeah. on the algorithm that day or what, you know, what's going on. Yeah. It's not the be all end all. You really need to be intentional about the actual things are going to going to move you forward yeah. um, quicker. So I, that is such a great tip. So thank you for that. Now, I have some really fun rapid fire questions for you. Okay. So I'm just going to say a word and then you're just going to say the first thing that pops into your head. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Ready? <laughs> okay. What's your favorite app? App? Uh, Spotify. No. Nice. Oh, is it allowed to be personal or is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay. about you. We're here on you. Yeah. Um, okay. Time of day? 6 a.m. Ooh. I'm usually asleep still. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting. Um, exercise, type of exercise. Uh, I, I do like an app, like some kind of hit boot camp. Kind of, I just like short and sharp, get it done, feel good for the day. Bit of cardio. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Habit. Habit. Your favourite oh, habit. Um, I like to, which I'm trying really hard to get better at, but I like to have, I will not like to have, I tend to have like 20 things open on my computer at one time, like just being, oh, I'll start, like I'll start unsacking the dishwasher and then something will need to happen over here and then I'll need to come over here. I just have things. My husband hates it. But I've just got always things mid because I'll finish something and then, or not, sorry, I don't finish something. He's like, how can you not just finish that before you move on to the next thing? It's like, well, things happen. And so a really bad habit is a half hung out load of washing and then half dishwashers there and half dinner's done because a kid needed help up there. And it's just, that's, and that's how I operate with sometimes with my computer as well. I start an email and then I go over here. And yeah, so I'm working on that at the moment. <laughs> Very relatable. Yeah. Um, okay, favourite way to relax? Uh, reading reading in a wine on a oh, yeah. yeah um okay last thing what's your favorite thing about your business favorite thing about my business is seeing mums who kind of transform the way they lunch box and just seeing their sense 
of satisfaction and how proud they are and how suddenly more motivated they are. I think you can often get in a bit of a rut and it becomes a bit of a like, you know, a downer to have to pack lunches and something that you dread. But seeing mums who who love to share and I so appreciate them sharing but pictures of their newfound love for making things fun and quicker and easier and you know adding little um, sticks like fun sticks or wrap bands and just ways that they're also enjoying it too it's not even if you know they've got kids who want to eat the same thing every day they can put their own little spin on it just to help fun it up a bit I think making something that's not that can be a bit mundane and Groundhog Day, just um, a bit more fun. So that would definitely be my favourite part of the business. That's so beautiful that it's not about you. It's about them. I love that so much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, it is. And I think now that we've got the space here and we open up on a Friday, I think even more so I love being able to interact on a personal level, like not just through um, social media now, like seeing these mums and helping them make their purchases in store here um, has been, brought that to a whole new level as well yeah how wonderful Hmm. where can we find you Anna uh yes so Instagram is lunchbox underscore mini um my Facebook group is lunchbox mini mums club also lunchbox mini on Facebook and my website is lunchboxmini.com all the places and does Crumbs Co have its own space? Yeah. Crumbs Co will be within my website for now. Okay. So maybe this time next year we'll see, see where we're at. <laughs> you never know. Then. You um, never know. Never know. That's exactly right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing thank all you. that you have today. I've loved it. Pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for listening. If you loved this week's episode of Brand Lover, take a screenshot of wherever you're listening and share your biggest takeaway on Instagram or Facebook. And don't forget to tag me. I'd love to give you a shout out and thank you personally. Also, feel free to subscribe and leave a review to help the Brand Lover podcast reach more heart aligned entrepreneurs just like yourself. Thanks again, and I'll see you next week.